what is up guys it is long due for me to make this video and i've gotten so many questions about it so i'm going to make this is going to be a long video by the way but this should um cover all the concerns the different scenarios you might fall into and everything you need to know about six port turbo in your fcrx7 whether you have a series 4 or a series 5. All right, first off, intake manifolds. So if you're, it doesn't matter if you have a series four or series five, you can use um, S4 or S5 turbo two intake manifolds if you choose. Now this is my way of doing it. Um, people who want to retain fifth and sixth fourth actuators, I don't want to get in depth with that, but that's a lot more involved than I assume you you know what you're doing if you want to retain the NA manifolds. But for me to get the uh, S4 T2 upper intake manifold and lower intake manifold, it costed me $180 shipped. Um, I got it from, I can't even remember who I got it from, but I got it from someone on Facebook. And then afterwards, um, the next thing up, uh, Turbo Choice. Um, I went with a S4 turbo initially and, um, it came with the turbo manifold and the wastegate and everything alongside with the, uh, coolant drain and coolant feed, um, pipe. It came with all of those and you're going to need all of those. Um, I recommend running coolant through your turbo because... Anyone that tells you you shouldn't is wrong. There's a reason why, and I don't want to even rant about that one. But that cost me $250, which is a little steep. You can find these turbos for typically cheaper. Long story short, I ended up switching to an S5 turbo I got for free with the manifold. Um, but um, you're going to need the turbo, and you're going to need the turbo manifold, and you're going to need a T2 drain line t2 feed line alongside with the m16 or m14 so if you have a s4 you need an m14 by 1.5 banjo with washers if you have an s5 turbo you need an m16 by 1.5 banjo with washers meaning um there are some cases my s4 turbo for some reason had m16 by 1.5 so that is kind of funky but yeah um next up oil lines <sighs> so i made a big mistake and i'll just warn you guys right off the rip um do not buy um the cx racing oil line kit what you want to do is you want to get a t3 t4 uh, oil feed line that you can find off Amazon for like 10 15 bucks it fits on the s4 and s5 turbos and it comes with a gasket and I believe it even comes with bolts um, get that and typically they come with a line and um, you want to get a sandwich plate for your um, oil filter to uh, get an oil feed source so that's what I did and um, I went with uh, the Mishimoto sandwich plate from I got it from Bonsai Racing for about $50 uh, actually I have it in front of me I got it for $55 and um, in that regard mint um, and then for your drain this is a tricky one. Um, you can use a T3 to T4. Um, also, for the line, actually, I used, for, so for the feed line, I used um, a dash 4 AN to 1 8 MPT because the Mishimoto uh, oil filter um, takes... Uh, 1 8 MPT fittings. So you're going to need an adapter to convert that 4AN line to uh, 
1 8 MPT, which can all be found on Amazon. And then at the turbo, you typically want a 90 degree um, bend um, so it doesn't kink. So these are all readily available through Amazon. If you have Prime, they'll get to you quickly. Um, so going back to the oil drain line, the oil drain line, um, you can use a T3, T4 um, flange um, to 10 AN underneath the turbo and it'll come with a gasket. You can find it on Amazon. Um, it's tricky. Um, so typically you want to run 10 AN line and it's very important to make sure that your oil drain line is as vertical as possible. Now, straight off the grip, you have a couple options to where you want to drain. I drained, I modified my NA front cover, which required one, you, in order to pull the front cover off on, um, these cars, you have to drill, uh, you have to make sure your clutch pedal is depressed because you're going to destroy your torrenting bearings and just kill your motor. It's a pretty involved process to remove your front cover. And it was a big pain in the part in the butt because I had to replace the front cover gasket and the O-ring and there are variation of front cover gaskets that you have to be very wary about. If I were to do it again, I would drain directly to the pan. Um, so what you can do is you can get kind of like a um, 10 drill into remove your pan. You have to raise the motor, which is super easy and pull your pan, re-gasket it. You can even put an oil pan brace to avoid leaks, but make sure you use black RTV and you want to drill and just tap a hole into the pan and um, you can have it accept a barb fitting or what, but there are adapters for it to accept 10 a.m. And I'll provide the photos in the middle of the video on how this all works. But to simply put it, um, I don't recommend the method I used, but I do have a little bit of experience and I do have a series four. Now, if you have a series five, you are in luck. Um, with the series five, uh, there is a, so technically the way they design the front covers is the turbo flange for the T2 is already kind of like there. It's the temp the templates there. All you have to do is just drill holes and um, you might not even, you don't even really have to remove the front cover. If you're very careful, you can actually take a drill and the technique is use a bunch of grease and then tap it. So with that, if you have an S5 cover, you can do that. And then I can't remember who has the flange, but you can get the flange put some RTV or a gasket, and then you should be good for the oil drain. The oil drain is going to be one of the trickiest things. I will assure you, just make sure you do it right. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, so we have oil lines. Um, so coolant, um, for coolant, um, what you want to do is if you have a S4, S5, whatever, and this, I'm talking about this guide, assuming you've deleted all your emissions. Um, there are two coolant hoses that go in between the back valve and go to the therm thermo wax on the, uh, to, um, it's like a cold start emissions kind of deal. First of all, you're gonna to have to do the throttle body mod to even uh, do this because you're gonna to need to use coolant lines. Um, and for the rear iron, you can use, there's a nipple on the rear iron and you, you can reuse these hoses, the NA hoses, and it will connect straight up to the feed line. So what I did is the flange, um, uh, for the S4 Turbo 2s and the S5s, there's a coolant passage through the block that goes to the intake manifold. Obviously on NAs, there is not. So what you can do actually is um, you can block that off. You don't even have to block it off. Mine isn't blocked off. Um, cut that flange and take like a, a brake line flare tool or something. And then bam, you have your feed line. And then for the return line, it hooks right up to the hose connecting to the water pump um the nipple on the back of the water pump 
and then bam you have a uh, coolant lines situated and um as i said for the series four um the banjo ball is m14 by 1.5 and then for the series 5 it's m16 by 1.5 but they can vary and if you have a series 4 turbo it might be m16 by 1.5 so just keep that in mind if you don't have a banjo and the supplied hardware and washers let's talk about exhaust this one's simple i just used a racing beat downpipe and i had an exhaust shop um Pretty much modify my cap back. Uh, the Racing Beak downpipe costed me $175 and it worked fine. Um, so, some things to note, and this is kind of important. Um, so, you're gonna get AM Y band or whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, since I'm gonna note that you're gonna need a standalone ECU later in the video. The location, the stock location for the narrow band O2 sensor will not work. You need to make sure that you have a bung for your um, wideband sensor located at least right by the trans tunnel um, or a foot away from the turbo because the exhaust gas temps will blow out the wideband in two minutes or less because I went through four wide bands and trust me, I know. So with that racing beat downpipe, if you plan on going that route, remember you're going to have to modify it. I had an exhaust shop actually just uh, drill and weld in a bung. So if you get an AM wide band, it actually comes with a bung and it, and it costs, and they did it for me for 40 bucks. So that was fine. Um, and then there, I had a downpipe. Um, that being said, um, I can get straight to uh, intercooler. Um, so if you wanna use a Turbo 2 intercooler, top mount intercooler, I'm going to tell you right off the grip, it's not gonna work. Due to the high compression ratio of of um of these cars the exhaust gas temps and just the heat it's not going to suffice uh that top mount intercooler it's going to choke things up and you're going to hurt your motor uh i went with the cx racing intercooler kit and it required minimal modification my tip of advice uh this intercooler kit cost me 500 dollars. it came with the intercooler all the piping required and the only modification I really had to do is just cut one pipe slightly shorter. Um, my advice for installing that is make sure you, you mount the radi uh, the intercooler first and mount it as high up as possible. Um, things to note, if you are planning on keeping AC, you want to um, kind of relocate your uh, AC canister or whatever it's called and you will not have really any fitment issues you're going to have to take off the if you're planning on running the stock power steering or if you have power steering you're gonna have to take off the fitting for it to fit right on and um yeah everything should work um that kit actually is almost pretty much direct um as I said, um, one thing that's important is you want to make sure you do the throttle body mod, um, removing the secondary plates on the uh, throttle body and removing the thermo wax. Now, next up is the throttle cable. The throttle cable solution, there are a couple options. So if you're running a turbo two manifold, um, you can either get a turbo two cable, but in my opinion, it looks really ugly. So this is what I did and I'll insert pictures and videos. I just made a bracket. I can't weld, I can't fabricate all that well. I just used a sawzall and a angle grinder and I made this. You can lay it out by cardboard or whatever, or if you just want me to make you one, hit me up. I can do that. I'm not the greatest, but it works. Um, and it will look like 
that whatever I'm gonna put in the video. Um, and there you have your throttle cable and you don't have to worry. Um, all right, I may have forgot a certain section. It is kind of important because we all need brakes. Um, you're gonna have to figure out a brake booster solution. So it's important to note, um, you can either get a Turbo 2 um, brake hard line, but that's dumb and annoying. Who wants to do that? Um, so what I did is I actually cut my uh, brake line and I took literally fuel hose that you can get from the auto parts store and connected it um, kind of around where it will be in the video, so I'm going to insert a clip, and that's pretty much how I got my brake booster to work. Um, so it will, because with Turbo 2 manifolds, uh, the placement's obviously different, so that should clear up any confusion um, because we all need brakes. Next up, uh, injectors. So I'm making this guide based off the fact that you're not running the stock ECU because you simply cannot. So for injectors, I went with the Injector Dynamics ID1050Xs, which are plentiful. It costed me $512 and um, I got it from Full, full, full Function Engineering. Full Function Engineering had provided pretty much everything you need and it's just a direct fit. No need for any diffusers or anything like that. It fits directly on Turbo 2 rails. Um, that being said, um, the Turbo 2 rails um, are good for 400 horsepower. They're absolutely great and you can adapt AN lines, no problem. Um, where can I get started? Uh, so yeah, that will do. It comes with the injector clips and everything if you want to wire that in. Um, one thing, also you're going to need Turbo 2 rails. You can either run S5 or S4 turbo rails, and I'll tell you the difference. The S5 has kind of a welded on fuel, fuel pulsation dampener. The S4 ones are notorious for leaking. Now I have a video on how I actually deleted the full fuel pulsation dampener and installed a fuel pressure regulator with this. Um, but to simply put it, you're just gonna need turbo two rails um, um, in order to get this to work right. So I got my turbo two rails for about $50 and they work just fine. A fuel pressure regulator. Now, there's ways to do this job for cheap. I spent about, and I have a video on all the parts you need, in general, around $250 to do it. And yeah, that is what you need. $250 to have a fuel pressure regulator. Um, another thing to add, I already had it on my car. You're going to need a fuel pump. I do have a Walboro 255, which I got for around $80. Um, some other options are the AM320 or 340, and there are many options from Dishworks. AM Walboro, all really great pumps. Um, can't go wrong. Um, you can find all of these either through Amazon or reliable sellers. Yeah, you are going to need a wide band. Uh, I got the AM wide band for $180 and bam. So Lastly, one thing I did not add to this list um, is um, you're going to need to modify your lower intake manifold 
and um, it is important to note I recommend getting brand new Turbo 2, uh, brand new Turbo 2 lower intake manifold and upper intake manifold gaskets. I got the Turbo 2 lower intake manifold gasket for, let's see, for $20. Actually, scratch that. What I did is I got a Turbo 2 upper manifold gasket. I forgot how much it costed, costed me. And then I also got a NA lower intake manifold gasket. And I just had to slightly modify it by cutting two little small ends and then it dropped right on. Um, it is important that you want to port match it, your lower intake manifold, and there's various ways. I use JB Weld and I actually want to redo this. JB Weld does work, but due to heat over time, it can deteriorate and blow up your motor. The best way to do this job, and Aaron Cake has a whole write-up on this, is um, you want to uh, actually probably weld up the uh, the galleries inside the lower intake manifold and then kind of get you can get a fabricator whoever to do it it should be easy and you get like a carbide bit or something to port match it i don't want to go too much in depth but as you can see i'm going to provide clips i have i've recorded over time um, my buddy patrick helped me do it and it's been working absolutely fine engine management this is going to be a tricky one. So there are a couple options. You can go with the Adaptronic PNP unit, which actually is a little pricier, but if you do not like wiring whatsoever and don't feel comfortable with it, that might be your option. Likewise, there are Power FC options. I do not recommend the Power FC for something like this, but if you choose, they do have PNP or adapter kits but I think the Adaptronic is probably the best plug and play unit if you do not like wiring. And I'll tell you, wiring is not that bad. Um, I went with the Link ECU, and this is where the prices are going to vary. So my Link ECU with a harness costed me $1,300. And to add to that, I spent $1,000 on the tune. This is where it gets really expensive. And then I spent around $200 on wiring supplies, $15 on $15 on pigtails and things like that. And around $40 on various other sensors, such as the GM intake air temp sensor, GM coolant temp sensor, and stuff like that. So altogether, for engine management, I spent upwards to $3,500. Yeah, yikes. Now, that completely defeats the idea of a budget bill. Now, that is my solution. I'm going to also note that I used FC ignition coils and I switched to LS coils. So for me to do the LS coil conversion, it costed me around $25. And yeah, no bueno. Um, a lot of money and finding a reputable tuner. Um, shout out to my tuner. That's his name right there, Ryan. He is very familiar with six sport turbo setups and high compression rotary turbo rotary setups. So that's why I went to him. Now to add to that, um. I'm going to give you guys an alternative because I know you guys are here to save money. Now, I had come to the discovery that the micro squirt supports the, um, let's see, the micro squirt actually supports um, rotary, rotaries. Um, so a micro squirt with the harness runs you four hundred dollars, and this will actually and it works. Look, we all love cars and Jesus modified. Christ. 
dirt costs around four hundred dollars and um with that obviously i'm on diy auto tune um yeah 388 dollars with a eight foot harness which is absolutely plentiful for an fc so there we go four hundred dollars so um with that um with the micro squirt right you spend four hundred dollars um on uh the ecu and the harness so we're going to add um the gm intake air temp sensor which is 27 dollars off amazon and we're also going to add the gm quilt temp sensor which is eight dollars from amazon and then we're going to add the gm quilt temp pigtail which is 15 dollars from amazon Mind you, the IAT comes with a pigtail too, and I'll provide links for this stuff. So what else do you need for a wiring harness? Now, wiring supplies alone will cost you around $50 to $70. That includes a relay, some wire, uh, butt connectors, and all of those things. And I will be making a guide on actually how to wire a micro squirt soon. So let's say wiring supplies. Cost around 65 bucks right so um, to add to that uh, the micro squirt supports the FC ignition coils so you don't have to worry about that which is super rad and then we're going to add a wideband so if you add a wideband into that as I said that cost me around 180 bucks right 180 bucks right and um yeah that is a total of let's see 27 plus ie plus 15 plus 65 so 515 dollars to get a to pretty much get a micro squirt with all the supplies you need, right? So, and then if you add 180 to that, including the wide band, $695 for a full functional standalone setup. And for example, I did a, micro, a mega square two harness just with Tessa tape and all the supplies you can think of um from autozone literally from autozone and i built this harness outside in one sitting and save a bunch of money so that's around 700 dollars being one of your cheapest options to get a standalone options now there are a few limitations but one thing that is cool especially if you're a beginner is there's a lot of resources from people like aaron cake um base maps and things like that to get your engine management all sorted and um there is a nice feature if you want to dial in your ve and you're not an expert tuner or don't feel like spending a thousand dollars on a tuner um i can provide um kind of some base maps maybe in the description that can get kind of conservative, kind of mid-level for S4 and S5 turbo setups in terms of ignition timing and a nice AFR table, assuming you're running a stock turbo. And with those two things, assuming you have a well-sorted ignition table and a well-sorted uh, AFR table, um, I don't typically play with um, staging too much. Um, I never had issues with staging on my old Mega Squirt setup. All you have to do is just kind of make sure your timing is synced before you even start driving. And once your timing is synced, you can use the Auto-Tune feature from DIY Auto-Tune, which costs around $55 to unlock it from the free version of Tuner Studio. And you can pretty much have your car self-tune, I would say. Um, it pretty much cleans up your VE table and gets the AFRs where it needs to be. So you'll have clean fueling and clean ignition timing. And then you can kind of play around with the other stuff with the resources from the forums, YouTube, and stuff like that. But you can definitely get a well-driving and well-sorted car handled. Um, super easy to set up. And assuming you have your old harness and all of that, 
as I said, you're spending around $700 for engine management. So I think the most expensive things on this list are going to be engine management running around $700, my injectors in my case, which ran me $500, and then um, my intercooler, which you can do for much cheaper. You can do a full front mount intercooler set, uh, set up for around $200 to $300. Um, it's not that hard if you have a sawzall and stuff like that. You can cut it up, use all the couplings. There are a bunch of kits on eBay that honestly work just fine. And it leaves more room to actually have a nicer intercooler core. If you make your piping, you can run a much nicer intercooler core from companies such as ETS. Um, Mishimoto's okay. Um, Vibrant, you name it. Gretty, uh, no, uh, Garrett, they make intercoolers. So those are your options. Um, and you'll save a lot more money. Um, so ways to save money. I would not cheap out on injectors. I would not cheap out on cheap wide band controllers. Um, you can cheap out on a standalone solution. As I said, it will cost you around $700 to fully have a well uh, well the cheapest option but very powerful as i said there are a few limitations with the micro squirt but it's not bad and if you choose to run direct fire that is another option um it runs batch fire for primary and secondary injectors so keep that in mind but the mega squirt slash micro squirt community has been a thing for over almost two decades well for a very long time, so, so to say, not almost two decades, but over 15 years. So it's been very viable in the rotary co rotary community, and there's a lot of resources on RX-7 Club and on the MS2 and, and that, on the Megasquirt forms um, that will provide you with everything you need um, to set up a Megasquirt or a Microsquirt. As I said, the Microsquirt is a cheaper option if you get a newer Mega Squirt 3, like the Mega Squirt 3 Pro Evo or something like that, that will actually cost possibly more than a. It's going to cost you more than a Link ECU, which is I'm running the Link Monsoon G4X. It's going to cost you actually more than an Adaptronic unit, and it's going to cost you more than a lot of options. Um, that's why I didn't note it. Um, so again, the whole idea is to be budget friendly. You're gonna spend $700 on proper engine management, which is key. Um, $500 on injectors and yeah. Um, so let's say you spend $500 to $1,000 on a tuner. If you don't feel comfortable tuning it, you're still not particularly hurt in that category, but a lot of people, a lot of resources online kind of make it a little easier. Um, and the Mega Squirt has great features like the Mega Squirt or the Micro Squirt has great features like Auto Tune, making your life easier to dial in your VE table. And it actually does a really good job at retaining great shaping on your VE table um, using that feature. Very user friendly, very easy, and great community. Another thing to add. Um, what I had done, and this is absolutely optional. If you're running a standalone ECU one, you're not going to have on the micro squirt or mega squirt, it does not have OMP control. On the Adaptronic, I'm not too sure. And on the link, you need to get pretty much a baller version of an ECU to even get OMP control. I deleted my OMP and I am purely pre-mixing. So to delete my OMP, the kit from Bonsai Racing costed $25. Sounds fine by me. I don't I was always pre-mixing and I assumed my OMP didn't work. So one of the major questions in terms of why would you six port turbo your car? There's a lot of reasons. To start off with. The 6 port turbo is nothing new. Um, it's been in the rotary world for decades. It's just nobody wants to document it. Now, the guys in Australia doing drag cars 
have six port setups, um, they flow really well. And not just that, with the high compression rotors, less boost equals more power. It just works like that. Now, what are the risks, you know? Obviously with a high compression motor, um, you're more prone to detonation. So for example, on the series four, you have nine to four to one rotors. On the series five, you have nine to seven to one rotors. So obviously you gotta be a lot more careful on a series five compared to a series four in terms of running boost. But the cool thing about this is you can use stock turbos from a turbo two and they respond quite well and put in some great gains. Um, another thing is people love turbo sounds. Um, you know, you get the fun and the joy of having a turbocharged car. The Enig uh, drivetrain can handle these absolutely fine with no launching um, or serious clutch kicks um, and you'll be fine. Um, there are people running the NA uh, transmission um, at 300 horsepower, no issue. That's solely just all on the driver at that point. So to also add to that, um, turbo two motors are getting very, very rare on eBay. They're going upwards for almost four grand, if not more. The problem with these J-Spec motors is one, they don't provide you with much in terms of compression numbers, and you really don't know the shape of these motors. And the biggest problem with that is housings are really expensive from Mazda, costing you around $600 to $700 just for housings. And if not worse, you're going to have to chase around for irons if you have a cracked or foul iron. To simply put it, Turbo 2s are just incredibly expensive, getting hard to find. Any motors, there's plentiful, there's a plentiful amount of motors. And um, one thing to also note is they're typically in better shape. First of all, they never saw a boost and they're typically well taken care of. And just with pre-mixing and things like that, the housings and other engine components just tend to hold up, even if it's for 200 or 250,000 miles, which is actually the almost the average ex life expectancy of an NA, um, if well taken care of. They run absolutely fine. NA engines are cheaper to find these days um, and just very easy to access in terms of various components. You can't go wrong. Um, um, another reason is if you already have a very healthy running engine and you're just looking for power, um, again, finding a turbo two engine, most people that end up getting J spec motors or just any turbo two engine that they can find end up rebuilding it right off the, right off the, like they just rebuild it. Like it just, it's like without even doing any compression numbers because they just know that's just part of the game. So with the turbo two engine, um, they end up, let's say replacing housings, maybe a rotor. You'll be so lucky if you can get a engine second hand without having to replace, cause it's not, it's more than just replacing apex seals or coolant seals or you know the basic rebuild stuff because you know a rebuild kit's around what fifteen hundred dollars or so um but you're gonna spend ultimately more on housings rotors irons things like that so that is why we six board turbo our cars it just makes sense now, a lot of people argue saying it's absolutely dumb and you don't save much money. Well, this video will clear up all the confusion. And yeah, we'll clear up a lot of confusion and save a lot of you guys a lot of money.
lastly, I want to give a huge, huge thank you to many people that actually helped me through this and um, people I had directly talked to. First of all, shout out to Aaron Cake for creating the foundation to allow me to create a community to help people out. And I do have a Facebook group I'll put in the description. Um, he technically is kind of the, I wouldn't say the godfather, but one of the people that helped kind of put the whole six sport turbo game on. I would like to thank Ryan Henrich, my tuner too, who had helped me a lot street tuning. Um, he's all the way in California. I'm here in Massachusetts. And he pretty much provided me with a lot of the technical details I needed to know and helped me around many of my mistakes. I'd like to also thank Jasper Castles, who was also a former six port turbo owner himself and helped me out with a couple things here and there. But he provided quite a bit and helped me whenever I needed it. Um, also, a huge thank you to Grant Dale. He has a six port turbo rotary Corolla, which is also a drift car. And he uh, has been a huge help and also provided a guide in my Facebook group. Um, but huge thank you to Grant for doing that. Um, I'm very thankful. And lastly, um, to one of the people that actually came to me for help, but helped provide many of the photos in this um in this guide, um, Tony De La Cruz. Um, Tony um, is finishing up his build and I've been helping him out and he's been sending photos back and forth, just video calls and things like that, just to make sure he's doing things right. And a lot of the photos you'll see in this video were provided by him too. So I'd like to th give a huge thanks to everybody that helped me out. Um, and just a lot of the guys on the forums. Also to add to that, I would also like to thank um, Dave uh, Detwheeler. Detwheeler, Dave. Dave was also a six port turbo owner and he helped me out quite a bit um, and put up with my questions. Um, so without a lot of these guys, I wouldn't know as much as I know now. And now I can relay that information here. So hopefully this information was helpful and uh, a lot of the resources will be in the description um, and don't feel afraid to comment um, if you need to ask a specific question. So yeah, peace out guys. I'm going to go to sleep, although it is three o'clock in the afternoon, but hopefully this helped a lot of you guys out.